Good morning, congregation of the Lord. I want to thank the membership here, the eldership, for allowing me to stand before you to bring the eternal and living word of our Father, the source of all life stems from him. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I was infected with this disease that is and has been ravishing the world. And I'm negative, but I have allergies that's just bothering me. I feel like I have to cough and I have to force myself <coughs> to get that out. And then this mask, whoo, wearing that mask is great, but it interferes with my breathing. Today is a very special day, as is every day. But Sunday is the day that changed the course of history for all eternity. It is the day that our Lord resurrected, you see. And then it is a special day in the fact that two brothers, Carlos and Rex, stepped up because of a need. And then we have two elders that are stepping down who were and still will be a pattern for us. I have been a part of this congregation since 1998. You know, there's so much going on in the world. Today's lesson is on leadership, but I just want to touch on something that has been on my heart and it has nothing to do with the lesson, but it's a word of encouragement for us because of these difficult and trying times. We have inflation, food is just skyrocketing, gasoline skyrocketing, war about to happen, famine all over the place, this disease is ravishing the land. What are we to do? I tell you, brothers and sisters, in the book of Jude, verse 20. But you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. In this time, we need to be faithful. We also need to keep our keep yourselves in the love of God waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life and have mercy on those who doubt we have a lot of people who doubt the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ save others by snatching them out of the fire to others Show mercy with fear, hating even the garments stained by the flesh. How are we to snatch them out of the fire? By what means do we use to do that? Is the means by the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's how we do it. So with our lesson at hand. God has placed leaders in his dispensation from the beginning with great teachers like Moses, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, Joseph, Hosea, Jeremiah, 
list goes on. But let us look at the meaning of leadership in the Bible. When we look at the leadership in the Bible, it is completely different from world point of view when it comes to leadership. See, the world looks at it as a natural concept, but the Lord puts a twist on it. And many people don't understand that and don't like it. So, Brother Todd read in your hearing this morning the, the scriptures. So we got a chance to hear what he read. We won't read all of that again for time's sake, but I'm just going to pick uh, some scriptures out of chapter 20, starting with verse 25. Jesus told them that you must not be like them, lording it over. You know, the rulers, they lord it over, over you means to put you in a position where they master over you what, when you become subjects to them. You're not going to, you guys are not going to lead in that way. He puts a twist on it. Verse 26 in chapter 20, it shall not be so among you, but whoever would be great among you must be your servant. You see, being great, it's like you're at my beck and call. I need you to fan me now. That's greatness. Uh, cut my toenails. I got long claws. King, king, king. You see, with the members of the body of Christ, the leadership, it's not like that. So Christ says in verse uh, 26 that you want to be great, then you need to humble yourself. Verse 27 says, and whoever would be first among you must be your slave. You want to be first? Okay, go ahead and serve. It's completely different from the world. And then in verse 28, even as the son of man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. You see, this is what Jesus did, the incarnate one, the word that became man, 100% man. Trust me, trust the word, trust the Bible. Jesus got tired, Jesus got hungry. Jesus had to use the restroom. How many of us don't have to do those things? As in Matthew chapter 23, verses 8 through 11, as Todd read, you know, call no man rabbi, call no man father, uh, neither be called instructors or even teachers, for the greatest among you shall be your servant. He twists that word great. You want to be great? Be a servant, and then you'll be great, you see. So, what the Lord said about leadership shatters the human concept of what leadership is in the New Testament. According to the natural uh, human concept, a leader is higher than others. Right? A leader, our concept is higher than others. See? But in these chapters, the Lord says that whosoever desires to be great among his people must be a slave, must be a servant. You see, the Lord's concept of leadership is the opposite of our natural concept. As being a leader, uh, you know, and I have all these subjects, you think I want to go and... Uh, wash dishes or sweep floors or I'm the, I'm the ruler, I'm the king, I'm going to get everybody else to do that and I'm not going to lift a hand. That's not, that's not the way it goes. I, I, I wish it went that way in my house. <laughs> I'm 
tell everybody. Wait. But yes, we do need leaders among God's people today. But these leaders must realize that in God's New Testament, they must be humble. They must understand that leadership in God's congregation means slavery. You still want to be a leader? See, if you would be a leader among God's children, you must be a slave. If we are genuine and honest with ourselves, everyone, right? loves to be in that leadership position telling people what to do yeah 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 but as being a leader you must understand that you have to do certain things okay you have to do certain things you must have a love for your brothers and sisters that are under you. But see, in such a heart of human nature, that concept does not exist. You see, even sisters in the congregation of the Lord, when they have their Bible studies, I've witnessed it in my 25 years of walking with the Lord. If I'm not number one or number two, I'm disappointed. We should not have that attitude. We should not bring that concept into our Bible reading. We should not do that, right? If you are truly a slave amongst the Lord's people, you must be willing you know, at the congregations that I've been attending, we have weeks where a certain people or person will clean the building, right? But I don't know how that goes here. You guys may have a janitor. But if you don't have a janitor, one of your elders may tell one of the deacons or somebody or some other person, hey, I need you to vacuum this floor. I need you to make sure the pews are clean and Books are in place. Is that right? No. Elders must be examples of the congregation of the Lord. You see, Brother Derek must be willing to vacuum the floor. Brother Derek must be willing to serve as a welcomer. Uh, how you guys doing? Glad to have you here today. You see, that's what leadership is. You must step out in the front, forefront, lead by example, you see. So we need to drop our natural concept of leadership and return to the pure word of God. My next point is gonna be as the one true leader, Christ, you see. According to God's dispensation, his economy, uh, there is just one leader among his people, the Lord Jesus Christ, right? As in Matthew chapter 23 and verse 10, and do not be called leaders, for one is your leader, that is Christ. So if anyone asks you, hey, who's the leader of, of your church you attend? Oh, Brother Johnson. Oh, no, 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 no. The leader of the congregation is Christ. So when we speak in this way, it indicates that we know the truth and that we practice the truth. If you give any other name besides Christ, then you don't know the truth and you're not practicing the truth. You see, you must understand that I have dealt with all types of faith and recently spoke with an individual of the Catholic faith and he told me that Peter 
was the first pope told me that Peter was the one that established the church. I said, oh, okay. Well, let's look into it. The Catholic Church claims that Peter was appointed by Christ as the unique leader. The New Testament, however, reveals a different story. That's why we must rely on the scriptures, you see. So in the book of Acts, yes, Peter spoke first. When we look at Acts chapter 2 and verses 14 through 16, but Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And when we look at Galatians chapter 2 and verse 9, as Paul comes to Antioch, and when James and Cephas and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given to me, they gave the right hand of fellowship to Barnabas and me that we should go to the Gentiles and date to the circumcised. You see here, Peter, who is Cephas, is not mentioned first, but second. When Peter stood up with the 11 on the day of Pentecost, he was bold as a lion. How do we see him now in Galatians chapter 2? Peter was acting cowardly. Peter was acting cowardly for when the brothers came from James, Peter refused to eat with the Gentiles. But let us read Galatians chapter 2 verses 11 through 14. But when Cephas came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face because he stood condemned. For before certain men came from James, he was eating with the Gentiles. But when they came, he drew back and separated himself, fearing the circumcision party. And the rest of the Jews acted hypocritically along with them so that even Barnabas was led astray by their hypocrisy. But when I saw that their conduct was not in step with the truth of the gospel, I said to Cephas before them all, if you, though a Jew, live like a Gentile and not like a Jew, how can you force the Gentiles to live like Jews? He fell away. You know, prior to this time, Peter, he practiced the truth eating with Gentile believers because of what he received in Acts Chapter 10, the vision that he seen. But when the brothers came from James, he no longer practiced the truth in this matter, you see. So through his weakness, Peter, what was Peter doing through his weakness? He was damaging the truth. We can damage the truth when we do not walk uprightly. We must walk. Uh, right. The truth that the Gentile believers and Jewish believers are the same. There are those Jews today who believe that Jesus Christ has not come and they are still trying to live in the old pattern. But what this indicates is that Peter's spiritual capacity had diminished once he fell. Peter, he wasn't backslidden or anything like that, but his spiritual capacity was less than James is at time, you see. So when we look further into this, the fact that brothers came from James indicates that James represented the church in Jerusalem. In Acts chapter 21 and verse 17 and 18, when we had come to Jerusalem, the brothers received us gladly on the following day, Paul went in with us to James, and all the elders were present. So what do we have? We have elders, everyone present, right? Here we are told that Paul and his co-workers went not to Peter, but to James, for all the elders, including Peter, were in James's house. They were in James's house. James was the one who was 
who represented the church in that city. A further indication of this is seen in the ref in the conference held in Acts chapter 15. This is just to give us a clear understanding concerning leadership and the, the concept in the New Testament. In this conference of apostles and elders, Peter spoke first, then Paul. In a conference, the leading one does not speak first. We understand that, right? And in Acts chapter 15 and verse 13, the final word in this conference was given by James, as indicated by these words. And when they finished speaking, James answered, saying, Men, brothers, listen to me. And look at verse 19, verse 19, where James give his decision. He says, therefore, I judge that we do not harass those from the Gentiles who are turning to God. Let's understand that when we put all these verses together, we see that Peter was not the unique leader in the New Testament. So when Catholics or anyone else approach us with, with such information that's contrary to the scriptures, we need to be able to cut straight. As in 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 15, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that need not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. And that's what we are doing today. You see, leadership depending on spiritual capacity. You see, I asked, uh, I received an email from my uh, uh, project manager and I had another gentleman working with me. I'm looking at the email saying, and then he looks over. I said, whose name you see first? He said, that's your name. I said, oh yeah, so what that means? Oh, that means that you're running things. I said, oh, I said, oh, okay. But the name next to mine is the guy that had, he was more in depth with the division that I'm in. So if he's on the scene and a question is asked, he might take the lead in answering the question. Am I going to look at him and say, hey, man, what are you doing? This is my job. You don't come over here, I answer all the questions. No, 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 we don't do that. You must understand. You'll see what I'm saying. You see, in God's New Testament economy, the leadership among his children are not official. It's not permanent, as we have witnessed here today, how Brother VR and Brother Charles are stepping down. It's, it's not a permanent situation. You know, we all got to meet. Judge, it's not an organization. Leadership depends on spiritual capacity. If you don't have the capacity to know the word of God, how can you lead or teach? You cannot do it. You see, the one with the greatest capacity is nine times out of 10 going to be the one doing the speaking. At one time, the capacity was with a certain brother, but at another time might be with a different brother. On the day of Pentecost, it was with Peter. But in uh, Galatians chapter 2, it was with James. You see, as in Acts chapter 13 and 2 says, as they were ministering to the Lord, fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Here we see Barnabas' name is mentioned before Paul's. Same thing with the little email, right? But when they were on their mission, Paul spontaneously took the lead because he had the greater spiritual capacity. He took the lead. What do you think Barnabas did? In Acts chapter 13, verses 9 through 12, when they were dealing with a, a gentleman uh, that was against the word of God, the congregation of the Lord, he was trying to stir people this way while we trying to get them to go this way. In 13, starting at 9, but Paul, who was so called, but, but Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at him because he was a false individual when it comes to the knowledge 
of the way and son and, and said you son of the devil you enemy of all unrighteousness full of deceit and villainy will you not stop making crooked the straight paths of the lord and now behold the hand of the lord is upon you and you will be blind and unable to see the sun for a time immediately mist and darkness fell upon him and he went about seeking people to lead him by the hand then the pro council believed when he saw what had occurred for he was astonished at the teaching of the lord you see it was barnabas who brought paul to antioch as long as they were in antioch paul took the lead barnabas did not argue with paul when paul uh, took the lead on the mission barnabas did not say to paul stand back or stand down no he did not don't forget that my name was mentioned first when the Holy Spirit told us to go and do our work, the Holy Spirit said Barnabas and Saul, not Saul and Barnabas, so step aside. He didn't do that. He didn't do that. You see, because Barnabas realized that Paul's capacity was greater than his, he did not argue with him over taking the lead. You see, sometimes when, when people uh, meet someone with a greater capacity, they want to hate on them. They want to hate on them. I had a young fella about this tall. And then I got Jolly Green Giant tall as my hands. So the little guy finally got some power. So he comes up to the big guy and he goes like this. So I'm your boss now. Now I'm going to tell you what to do. <laughs> I said, and the big guy said, no, you're not my boss. You see, so when we get a little power, we want to try to use that. That's, that's not how it is with the church of, of our Lord. I'm almost finished here. So. The Lord also established under the old covenant kings. He never put three or four kings reigning in Judea at the same time. He didn't do that, no. But he has appointed uh, 12 apostles. He has appointed elders and deacons in the congregation. This is polarity in the leadership indicates that actually there is no fixed leadership in the congregation of the Lord right where you are sitting here today. So we need to learn to practice the truth as in Matthew chapter 20 and verse 27, whosoever wants to be first among you must be a slave. You see, there is an individual in the third chapter of John, uh, 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 third John back there who didn't see this that way. Looking at 3 John, verse 9. John says, I have written something to the church, but Diotrephes, who likes to put himself first. You see, he want to be first. So if you want to be first, you need to be a slave. He didn't see it that way. So he likes to put himself first, does not acknowledge our authority, the authority of the apostles. So if I come, I will bring up what he is doing, talking wicked nonsense against us, and not content with that, he refuses to uh, welcome the brothers and also stops those who want to and puts them out of the church. This is the guy that want to be first. He don't remember what Jesus said. You want to be first, you must be a slave. So he put it back the way that he wanted to do it. You see. But when we do this in verse 11, beloved, do not imitate evil, but imitate good. Whoever does evil, whoever does good is from God. Whoever does evil has not seen God. You see, and we have one head, right? There's no subheads. 
we only have one head, and that head is Christ, according to Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 5 and chapter 5, verse 23. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. He is head of the church, his body, and he is himself his savior. So he is the head of the church, the church is his body, and he is the savior of his own body. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. But I want you to understand that the head of every man is Christ. See, the head of every man is Christ. There is no subheads or anything under that. Each one of us, if you have been baptized in the body of Christ and you striving to please the Lord, you got Christ as your head and your guide. You must walk according to what he says in the scriptures. Right? So, and he is in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 18. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the first born from the dead, that in everything he may have the preeminence. In Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 22 and 23. And put all things under his feet and gave him as head of all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all all. You see, the New Testament reveals that all the children of God are one body, as in 1 uh, Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 12. For as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of that body being one are many. See, people twist that and think, oh, it's different bodies. It's different heads. No, it's only one head and one body, which started in Jerusalem, you see. Although there are many members, there's just one head. According uh, to our natural concept, there are many subheads. But we talked about that. We understand that there is no such thing as a subhead. The body has one unique head, and that is Christ. In my closing thoughts, obeying the leading ones. We must obey the leading ones. You see, we have seen one aspect of the truth concerning leadership, the aspect that in God's New Testament dispensation or economy, there is no official permanent leadership position. Why? Because we already have the one head in place. Now, we need to consider uh, this other aspect when it comes to Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 17 says, obey the ones leading you and submit to them for they watch. Over your souls would be unprofitable for you. To have someone leading over you and he really don't want to be doing it. It's not good. We all need to obey the leading ones. This does not mean that the elders exercise authority over us. No, it means that as those who are older and more experienced, they take the lead and we need to follow them. You see, to obey means what? To obey means to follow. That's what obey means. Regarding the elders, Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 3, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. Just because you've been put in a leadership position, that don't mean that everybody is slave to you. It goes the other way, you see. The elders are to take the lead by becoming patterns, not by lording it uh, over the saints. If the elders say that something needs to be done, then they, maybe they need to do it themselves. You know, wipe that table off. What? I'm not going to wipe that table off. You wipe it, wipe it off. Be an example for me, you see. So we see, we see that. And in verse 5 of that same chapter, in the same way, you who are younger, submit yourselves to your elders. See that? Nowadays, we've seen on TV where younger people were running around knocking older people out. 
ridiculous, right? So he says, right, in verse 5, in the same way, you who are younger, submit yourselves to your elders, all of you. And then he says, all of you. It's everybody now. Clothe yourselves with humility toward one another. Because God opposes the proud, but gives, shows favor to the humble. So moreover, there are times when the older ones need to submit to the younger ones. Hey, Dad, man, let me tell you, let me tell you, man, you, Dad, just listen. Stop being stubborn. Yeah, your kids ever tell you that? Humble yourself, right? So we, we need to humble ourselves. It's a beautiful picture, you know. What a beautiful picture this is when the older has to submit and humble themselves under the young. It is absolutely different from the natural concept of leadership in the fallen uh, humanity that we live in. Not only the fallen humanity, but the mentality of mankind is fallen and corrupted apart from Christ. If you are not a Christian here this morning and would like to become part of the body of Christ where you will receive all of your nourishment from, it's nothing greater when you know that you have eternal life dwelling in you right now. They ain't waiting until later. It's now we have eternal life. I believe it. I believe what my father says because I know he is real. If you stand in need of prayer, we, we will pray for you. Let us be led in the song that has been selected in our hearing.